Welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Ellie and welcome to Small and Strong. If you scroll through my channel, you'll see a lot about epilepsy, but you may not see quite as much about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So today we're going to change that and I'm going to be discussing that with you. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a connective tissue disorder and I got diagnosed with it when I was 15, but it's something that you have your whole life. You just may never get diagnosed or you may never have a problem. I have made a video all about my Ellis danlos Syndrome diagnosis story and how I had to learn to walk again. So I'll have that up above and in the description down below. You can check that out after this video. But today I'm going to be talking about how I manage it, how I live with it, how I treat it on a day to day basis, because unfortunately it is not something that you can be cured from. It's not something where you can have a big surgery and it can be fixed because it encompasses so many things that it's just not possible. Most of my problems with my EDS started when I was about 15 and I was a gymnast before this. I did so many sports. Around the age of 15, I had stopped. This was like the start of my problems because for my whole life, my muscles had been really toned, really strong, and I'd been using them so much. When I stopped using them, it meant that my connective tissue actually had to do what it was made to do. And because it's faulty, it couldn't. So my joints started dislocating and I started getting a lot of pain. So the main thing that is important for me to do personally is to maintain some level of exercise, which is why I try and work out whenever I can. And I try and fit in little bits of exercise and I try and keep using my body. That's also where physiotherapy comes in. When I was younger, I had a lot of physio when I was in hospital and for years afterwards. But now that I'm an adult, I don't have as much because I swap from the children's system to the adult system, which is a whole debacle in itself. And that could be a whole video. But I do my own physio exercises that I got given when I was younger and I still do them now. The next one is kind of strange, but if you're on any of the Facebook groups, you'll notice that this is sort of a recurring theme that doesn't get talked about enough. And that is hormones. For women, when it is their time of the month, they often struggle a lot more with their joints and they're in a lot more pain. And we found this when I was younger. So I went privately and I got put on the pill. Now you've got to be very careful with what pill you get put on because one of the hormones, I'm not a doctor, but one of the hormones makes your joints looser and one of them makes them tighter. And you don't want a big fluctuation because it just makes your life so much worse. So definitely look into it. Having my wheelchair is also part of my EDS management because with the loose connective tissue, walking is hard. My hips can dislocate, my knees constantly dislocate, so do my ankles and walking is difficult and a lot more tiring for me than it would be just someone who doesn't have EDS. So having my wheelchair means that when I need to use it, it is there and I'm not cut off from the world. I don't have to stay inside. I don't have to stay in my bed. I, I can actually go out and still do things. But also it's a really good preventative measure because sometimes with EDS you can do things and then you'll have to like pay the price afterwards, which I'm not a huge fan of. So even if I may not be having the worst day, I'll still use my wheelchair because then I won't have to be really tired later or I won't be in so much pain later. So if you're worried about the fact that you don't necessarily feel like you need the wheelchair because you can walk, you can still use it for loads of other reasons. And I know that loads of people with EDS are ambulatory wheelchair users, and I know that it helps a lot of people. You can manage your EDS as well as anyone in the world, but you will still be in some level of pain pretty much constantly. For me, it is constantly, no matter what I do. If I exercise, it's often worse, but then it makes it better. It's really a double-edged sword. You can't really win, I don't think. So I take a lot of painkillers. These are all prescribed by my doctor and I get checks to make sure that I'm okay with them. I take naproxen every morning and every night. It's sort of the same as ibuprofen, but just stronger and helps with inflammation and I take codeine if I dislocate a joint. There are definitely things you can get over the counter such as like cocodamol and just normal ibuprofen and paracetamol. If they work for you then that is great and good but unfortunately for some people with EDS they just don't quite cut it so you have to go to your GP and get prescribed painkillers but if you need them you need them and I need them and they work so that's what I do. 
Another way I manage pain is with heat packs. If you watch some of my vlogs, you will see that I'm almost constantly attached to a heat pack. For my 20th birthday, I've asked my dad for a heat pack. I just love them. They really do make my life better and they help me manage my pain and my muscle tightness and my muscle soreness a lot. And I just love them. I can't preach about them enough. Honestly, I should be sponsored by them. Anyone out there who has EDS or knows someone with EDS will know that we have a lot of straps and medical tape and different medical devices and crutches and wheelchairs and I'm no different. So many different parts of my body get injured in so many different ways that I sort of have to be prepared for every eventuality. So I will be making a video in the future showing you all my straps but for now let's just say she's got a lot and that's because despite all the management I do at the end of the day EDS is EDS and my joints will always fall out and my joints will always have some sort of problem and it's just about trying to make it impact your life as little as possible so that you can get on with doing the things that you love. Those are all the ways I manage my EDS. If you've got any more, head over to my Instagram, which is at small underscore and underscore strong and let me know what you do. I'd love to hear anything that you think I've missed because we can all help each other here. I hope this video has helped you. If it has, please give it a like and subscribe. I'll be talking about my EDS more in the future. So hopefully I'll be able to help more of you. But as I've said, that is all for me today. So I will see you in the next video.